drifting long. Shapovalov, I think, thought that was a let. Well, I thought I heard a let. In, in, in our earphones, Mark. Your hearing's better than mine. Mm. He usually comes out smoking, does Nadal. Dangerous. He's dangerous from any part of the court. And to be fair, Ball at times, down. and not being unkind, he's a little dangerous to himself. Just missing too many balls. But that's the kind of elegant shot making we can see from the Canadian. Start from Rafa. Brad, a totally different player in Tommy Paul, obviously, when he takes on somebody like Dennis. But what's the game plan in your mind here? I mean, I think for Rafa, it's, it's about ball movement and consistency. I, I think what you mentioned and I mentioned before, we, we all know that Dennis is an amazing shot maker and, and, he, and he can hit the ball with phenomenal pace through the court the question is how many times in a row can he do it point after point after point after point and Rafa's going to absolutely be aware of that I think in the end that uh, his his ben game plan is pretty simple probably the most basic game plan you can come up with is I'm going to make more balls than you do so there is the pre-match win predictor Gee, it's it's pretty lopsided there Big day for Shapovalov. A big day in his young career and a very big opportunity. If you look at that win predictor, people don't believe he's going to win this if you look at that. I'm not sure that's correct. Suffocated the bounce Long pretty quick thing. there, Brad. Rafa right in. Yeah, one of the things we're always looking at with Rafa is where his return position. He stood in and took that one very got it on Dennis really quickly. And, and we saw, just like we talked about, Dennis can be a little bit wild at times.
you've mentioned, Mark, how good Rafa's record is against left-handers. What about Shapovalov against left-handers? Because uh, I think a lot depends here today on how he how he plays, how he finds playing a lefty, particularly one this good, and how his serve can possibly help him get over the line here. One eleven lost 15 at two level for this man. He's uh, one and one at the majors. Kind of went over Del Bonis in the uh, US Open last year, but 2018 lost to uh, Martyr at Roland Garros. Still finding his feet really in terms of those kind of numbers. But yeah, as in a strict comparison with Rafa's record against lefties, obviously that's not measuring up particularly well for him. But he's young. Yeah, he's just 22 years of age. I would actually say it's not his serve that's going to be the problem today. It's actually going to be his ability to break. If you take a look at Dennis in terms of break points converted against players in the top 100 on average, he's at 18%. Obviously, that drops against the elite players. Top 10 is just 11%, and he plays a guy like Rafa in the top five, and it's down to 9%. So, I mean, that's 50% you know, worse in that regard. So it's it's tough for him to make breaks. If you actually look at his serve numbers against the elite, it's not that far off. It's a couple of percent, but it's his ability to break the serve that's proved problematic for him against the very best players. And that shot there probably, Brad, is one of the reasons why. He doesn't mind chipping the ball, but I wouldn't say he's as good as he should be at it yet. Absolutely. I think for a one-hander, historically, as he's been on the tour, he, he's he's used the slice very limited, and uh, that's always been an area that I thought he could improve in. Those too he volleys pretty well, though, Brad. You know, like, he, he, I mean, he's not... He's not a super volleyer yet um, by any stretch of the imagination, but he's pretty darn good for a young player in, in, in comparison to the modern players. And uh, you'd think if, he, if his backhand volley is pretty solid, his backhand slice, logic says his backhand slice should be a little better than it is, I would have thought. Lent. I'd have to throw logic out the window. Because I agree with you, Fitz. You know, you know, normally those two things go to wet, go together, but uh, he he just hasn't used the slice much over his short career in the pros. It, it, it's not a he, he goes for the one hand. He comes over the ball on a very regular basis. He really, only hits a slice when he absolutely has to. Extreme defense most of the time. So good, so good, lovely flowing all-court tennis. Thirteen. Tell you 15. what though, the, the, the problem you face against Rafa is to win the point when you, when you slice and come in, you better hit one within centimetres of the line, which he did. Because if you give Rafa any time there to, to hit that forehand, you, you're going to eat the ball for breakfast. Great anticipation there, though, from Shapovalov to cover that one across court. This is going to be a lot of fun. Fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, you see early on already the shot-making skills of Shapovalov. I mean, that backhand that he hit, although it didn't get past Rafa, but the pace, the rip that he got on that ball from that position on the run, really impressive. Okay. Now done. Now 
Nadal leads by two games. Span it one. up 2 1. First set. Brad, when was the first time that Dennis came into your consciousness? Uh, I was actually working for the USTA back in 2015, and I, I came down here to the Australian Open and was helping the juniors at that time. And uh, I was here with Taylor Fritz and a couple of the other American guys and, and uh, came across Dennis and uh, his coach, Andriano, at that time. And, and we all just kind of hit it off. I ended up actually going to the zoo with him and his coach one time. And we had him practice with a bunch of the American guys. And, and we actually got to be pretty close. And I've known him pretty well ever since then. What zoo was that is my question. Yeah, yeah, Brad Simon, he talked about his first meeting with Dennis Shapovalov. Uh, what zoo was it? The Melbourne Zoo. Ah, I, I thought maybe it was the, the tennis tour zoo that you might have been talking <laughs> We see that every day, Fitz. <laughs> I've seen you in a cage around here a few times. <laughs> they should leave him in there. <laughs> oh, stop it. Guys, fellas. First time I saw him was when he won the Women's oh, Junior title. Players, please. Players are ready. Thank you. Did he beat Alex Demonor, I think, in that final? today that that's probably the most sh important shot for both players the four and down the line please disagree now is are you saying Rafa's forehand both down the line is... and Dennis's okay so it's not Rafa's forehand that's the most important thing to both players I, I think whoever hits that shot the best today yeah, yeah. has the best chance of winning yeah because I was, I was thinking maybe you meant Rafa's forehand might decide the match. If he hits it that well, he wins. If he doesn't, maybe not. Well, it's not as devastating, is it? The Shapovalov forehand, but it's still, it's still uh, an interesting shot with a lot of flair. And he can crack a lot of winners from it. It's not as consistent as Rafa's because of the the spin and the safety that uh, Nadal has on his forehand. But it's a weapon. Carlos Moya in charge. Some early chances for Rafa then. A couple of loose forehands from the Canadian. It's just like uh, gold for Nadal there, just to receive a gift. He can do that, can he, Shapovalov? He can spray balls at times. Yep, he can. Architect of his own demise early on here. Rafa prowling around in the 
shade at the back of the court. First blood to the Spaniard. Change of racket coming up here for Shapovalov, I think. 15. Petch, I did want to mention in that last game, I, I found it interesting in the first point before Rafa hit that forehand winner. And then again in the last point, he, he looked to lift the ball quite a bit more. The, the first one he did cross court to the back end of Sh Shapovalov. I think that's going to be a, a constant that happens throughout the match, him looking to lift the ball heavily to the back end side. Brad, I think that's a great point because, you know, we did have a, the beginning of a quiz here earlier on about the right-handers that Rafa has, uh, has lost to. And the ones that can beat Rafa over the journey have been the, 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 the single-handed backhands have been very, very strong athletes that, who, who can control that ball up high with, with one hand. It's not easy against this forehand to do that. And, and that's a big question for Dennis today, I think. If he, if he rips the ball up high on this court 13, in these 15. conditions, the ball's going to fly. And it wouldn't be beyond the realms of possibility that Shapovalov will spray that backhand a little bit because it's hard to control up there. Fitz, have you got your list yet? 12 got, guys. I've got the beginning of a list, but nowhere near 12. 12, 12 losses. So obviously someone, and you'll know who that is, has beaten him a, a more than once. Oh, okay. Oh, it's 12 losses. That makes losses. a big difference. I thought it was 12 different players. I was struggling there. Oh. 79 wins, 12 losses against players with a one-handed backhand at a major. Well, possibly half of those are from one player. <laughs> Four. And, and, okay. it, and at least some of them are two players from the same country. Yes. Okay, let's start with those two. Can we start? Yes. Well, let's get those out of the way. Ro Roger Federer has beaten him four times, you say? Yes. And Stan Vavrenka, I'd say two? Once here, in okay. the final. Okay, once. So we've got seven other names. Brad, good luck. <laughs> Good luck could be attached to Shapovalov out here at the moment. This has been a very impressive opening five games from the Spaniard. He's grabbed four of them. Excuse me, can you open that, please? And we'll let Brad just marinate in some of those thoughts that he has about the players, Fitzy. And you look at that return from Shapovalov, that's where you kind of feel like he's got a bit of doubt. Should I drive it? Should I chip it? And, and therefore, he doesn't actually hit the cleanest of returns. Yeah, and I, and I think uh, if we talk about marination, I think uh, Brad is marinating down there in his own sweat. It's warm down there. He's sitting on, <laughs> he's sitting on the side of the court. That, that'd, be, that'd be an interesting marin... <laughs> Fitz, I'm, I'm as comfortable as a clam right now, trust me. <laughs> a clam in the sun. I'm from, I'm from the valley, Fresno in California. This, this, is just, this is just a nice day. Yeah, okay. All right, we'll come back to you in about three hours But <laughs> on that. But, um, yeah, look, I, the, the back end, I think Rafa is going to hammer today. That's what it looks like early on, doesn't it? Time. You know, I love being here. I love working with you guys. It's always good fun. And Brad, throw me some names. We'll get this done. I'm going to say Dominic Tim. Correct. Odds open 2020. Fitzy's got to come up with the next one. Oh, my goodness. All right, I'm going to put you out of your misery here. Shri Chapan, 2003, Wimbledon. James Blake, 2005, US Open. Mikhail Yuzny, US Open, 2006. Fernando Gonzalez, US Open, 2008. What a forehand he had. Steve Darsis, out of the blue, 2013, at SW19. Thank you. And the one you probably should have got, Steph Sitsipas, here last year. Wow. Okay. I don't think I had many of those, Brad.
Yeah, I don't what? think either of us were going to get uh, Scuba <laughs> Steve Darsus. <laughs> that is, that's quite a, yep, that's a left field question, that one. The win of his career, Steve. Good effort. Nice. When he's got time and the ball's not jumping up there on these conditions, the backhand is really good. But it's, uh, it's, he's going to have to deal with some different heights, bounces and speed on that side of the body during the course of this match. Beautiful. You just can't see that side of his body being as consistent as Nadal's. Nadal barely misses on that backhand wing, and it's just flashy. The Shapovalov backhand, it's a, it's a wonderful shot, creates some gorgeous winners, but just comes up with a few errors too that, that have hurt him so far. He's not giving him time at all off the return here, is he? And, and Chapo's coming in with some decent pace on the second, but actually it's almost hurting him. That, that was a... T Sorry, Brad, you might want to speak, but that, that was a talented backhand right there. Off the right hip, he, he flashed that backhand return. Um, that was awkward, and yet he made it uh, an incredibly deep, fast return of serve that just handcuffed Shapovalov. He, he, he looks ominous, doesn't he, early, Rafa? Doesn't get much cleaner than that, guys. Deuce. I think one of the things that's always impressed me about Rafa is his capability to make adjustments within matches. And he obviously came into this match with a plan to attack the second serve, and he's been super effective so far in doing so. And he's won quite a few points outright like that, but he's also drawn a few errors right away from Dennis. Fastest serve of the day from Shapovalov there at 210 Ks. He has had three extra hours on court compared to Rafa to get through to this stage. Rafa. <laughs> I tell you, it takes a high level of skill just to stay in this point if you're Shapovalov here. Wonderful scrambling. But uh, yeah, Rafa's started out strong. One of the best overheads in our sport. Often overlooked. Rafa gets back really strong. He's so loose and relaxed on the overhead.
He's got to weather the storm here, doesn't he? The Canadian. Hang in there, Dennis. That's what he's got to do. And just stay within reach of Rafa early. Even if he loses the first point, he just can't let himself get blown away here. So he's, he's making a stand in this game. Good to see. Fired up. Jamie Delgado there. His uh, coach went over to Abu Dhabi. That was uh, part of the trial. In fact, I think they're still part of a trial period through to Miami. But obviously, things working out well. There's Jamie, obviously, with Andy Murray for a very long time. Before that, actually, Gilles Muller, who, of course, had a couple of wins against Rafa as well. Actually sat in the box, of course, with Jamie when Dennis dismantled Andy at Wimbledon this year it was uh, a, a strong performance in the locker room afterwards he actually came up to us and said that's probably the best match I've ever played Dennis said yeah also highlighted for Andy he felt like he needed to work on his serve and he went to work the next week and has kind Thank of you. remodeled it from there but um that was an impressive performance at Wimbledon of course came up short against no back in the semis in four so did you say you were sitting in the box with Jamie Delgado yeah watching Wimbledon. Dennis uh, that the so that's the opposite box of Andy's. I was sitting in Andy's box watching. Aha, uh -huh. yep. gotcha. That makes sense. Okay, is he getting the pace a little bit now down there, do you think, Brad? Love he was spot on with his contact point throughout that rally, so I, I think he's starting to feel it a little bit. Also love that slice backhand. That was a penetrating slice off that one. Pets, you'll like this. I know how you love technical aspects of the game, but that happens way too much to Dennis right there. He He's out in front of that, and then his head is leaning forward, and his hips are going backwards, and, and that happens on a relatively regular basis and leads to an error on that side. So, Brad, that, that is just another reason why he has to improve his backhand slice. And, 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 you know, not give away free points by going after the return all the time. Like, if he could block a few back uh, and be a bit more consistent with the, uh, with the slice during the rally, that, that, would, uh, that would help, wouldn't it, in terms of consistency? Absolutely. He did the same thing on the return on the outside there, and the hips went the wrong way a little bit, and it was a miss hit on the return. There's nothing quite like Rafael Nadal in full flight, and that's what we've got right now. Joy to watch. 5 2. Nadal leads by five games. Brad, how do you like Dennis's grip on his return? It's kind of right on top. Yeah, he's pretty extreme with that grip, for sure, Patch. And I, I do think what, what Fitzy said is really, really accurate. It is, you know, in watching him play in the finals in Stockholm, he's just right on the edge. You feel like he's, he's almost right at the edge of redlining on most of the balls that he's going after on returns. And, and you, 
you just want to see him temper his game just a little bit more based on score and decisions, put more balls in play, give himself a chance to, to settle into the points a little bit more. time for Canadian tennis in the last few years hasn't it of course it's been a very good time for Spanish tennis for many decades now it's never not really been a good time for them but while well, the Canadians have been magnificent obviously Milos Ranić on the men's side really started to, to push forward you've got Felix Oje Aliassime of course still in here but making the semis of the US Open Bianca Andreescu winning the US Open Eugenie Bouchard making a couple of finals as well in the course of her career Leila Fernandez, of course, runner-up at the U.S. Open. The success rate for the players that they've picked in many ways has been pretty sensational. New balls. Shapovalov serving at 2-5, opening set. Seaman Shapovalov, of course, third and fourth Those Canadian men to reach the last eight here in Australia. Raonic, who's made five Australian Open quarterfinals, of course, and pushed further as well. And Michael Belkin, who reached the last eight here in 1968. You must have been 20 then, Fitzy. <laughs> uh, you're so complimentary. I, I, it just melts my heart sometimes, Mark. You do make me smile though, and giggle. <laughs> you're not you're not actually far off the mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. The year tennis went open. Correct. 1968. Bournemouth. I just think of the great Rod Laver. Every time I think of tennis going open. Not easy to achieve with a guy serving 180 kilometers an hour on his second serve, the quality of returning here from Nadal. But obviously, from a logical standpoint, with the way that Dennis produces his long, languid swings, it's actually the perfect play. It's just rifling back to the Canadian. change up in speed on that second Brad dropped about 30 K's and Rafa had to make a little adjustment there he'll be disappointed with that last year he was loading up to try and do some damage on that ball but to get back to that return mark I was really keeping an eye on him for a couple of those points on second serves and he's taking the ball well inside the baseline right now and just being very compact with his swings I mean he looks like a full-on hardcore player right now and just using Shapovalov's pace when he came in with that previous one at 179 to get it back on him so quickly.
You like taking the air out of Rafa's second serve, Brad. Is that how you would like to see players return it? Well, I think at this point in the set, Dennis made that decision in order to try and make a ball in play. You're standing deeper in the court, let the air come out of the ball, and then you miss the return. Uh, that, that's really painful. Wow, that was a big second serve from Rafa. And I think to answer your question more specifically, Mark, I mean, ideally, if you have the capability to take the ball earlier, I would want to be doing to Rafa what he's doing to Dennis and stand in closer and, and take the ball earlier. But I think at this point in the score, Dennis is trying to make sure that he's making returns. But this time. Well, the first two shots of the rally were absolutely sensational from Shapovalov. The volley, however, was not. You know, you know when I look at him, I think. He excites me, and one of those reasons is not not just because he's he's a talent, but he's got so many areas that he could improve. Uh, I mean, that that volley was ordinary. He he needs to improve that. But if he does, you know, it, there's several facets of his game where he can really improve, and then he then he's a contender. Champion stuff here from Nadal at the moment in the opening set, 6-3. Six, three. Six games to three. Forty minutes, and exactly the way Nadal would have liked to have seen that opening set unfold. How's that for some numbers? We were talking the other day Brad about players being able to serve in the 70% now. Rafa at 76% first serves in. And it's not as though he's just rolling it in as well. 192 Ks on average. Yeah, that's a really big number. He served extremely well, obviously, throughout that set. The thing that sticks out to me, which we, we don't see in the stats here, or, or maybe we do because it shows up in the unforced error numbers, but you know, Dennis gave up one break in that game and he really broke himself. It, Rafa hit a forehand winner up the line to open that game up, and then there were three forehand errors in a row from, from Shapovalov. He just kind of gave that game away, and, and that's what we've talked about in relationship to the, the inconsistency in his game at times. Terrific atmosphere. This tournament has been absolutely wonderful. Die. The Victorians came to enjoy tennis, to start living a little more normally once again, and they have made a huge impact, as have the players, on a wonderful Final opening six. nine days of this Grand Slam, the first major of the year. The most exciting thing for me, the emergence of new players. Yeah. It's awesome, isn't it? I love it. New names, new styles, new characters. And we love our champions, don't we? But interwoven always with that tennis tapestry are the new names, are the new stories, the breakouts, the players that have promised so much, the suggestion Second of tennis. greatness. Dennis Not everybody. Awesome can have the suggestion of greatness like Rafa as a teenager and deliver on it as quickly as he did. 2005, of course, Thank you. won Roland Garros.
fought so long ago, he's still not ready to play. Yeah, you gotta coach him. Yeah, and coach him now. Now you are not ready to play. Interesting. Dennis unhappy there, guys, with how long Rafa was taking to get out. He said to Carlos Bernardo that he started the clock four or five seconds before he got saying that he's not ready to play. And he had told him, you got to code him. Are you kidding me? You guys are all corrupt. You guys are all corrupt. Wow, that's a nice comment. a little bit uh, out of line, in my opinion, by Dennis. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think that's a bit immature to say that. I mean, it, I, I think he has a point like th that that uh, Rafa really runs the clock down. He, get, he it's tight all the time, but I don't think he should be using language like that. We couldn't hear it all, Brad. By the way, I I, I think maybe you could down there. Kind of ironic, really, because Carlos Bernardes is the guy that Rafa fell out with a number of years ago from Rio when he went off to change his shorts, came on and did get coded, and then actually kind of asked to not have him on his court for a while. And, and he's an exceptional oh, umpire. Yeah, I don't know. If, did, did you guys hear what he said at the end there? He said, what, who, Dennis? Yes. Yeah, he said, you, you guys are all corrupt. And he said, you guys are all corrupt, yeah. basically talking about the umpires. I mean, uh, that's a pretty inappropriate comment. Yeah, yeah. Again, shuffle on. First game, second time. So on one hand, they're definitely not corrupt, the umpires. On the other hand, Rafa comes out 40 seconds after supposedly, you know, the time he should have been playing. The umpire probably should have done something. Yeah, he should at least give him a soft warning at yeah. that point. Dennis was imploring him to code him. You've got to code him. You've got to code him. And it is going to be a part of the match today that Dennis is going to feel that he's quicker in between points. He is going to feel as though that is something that he can use to upset Nadal's rhythm. It's a hot day. Rafa will take the maximum amount of time. Well, we'll see if Dennis can use that uh, emotion and energy to his benefit or detriment here. Look at me, they have eight seconds to play. What do you want? Uh, why you look at me like uh, I need to watch the... You, you have the top clock for this. You discuss him because of that. It's okay, my friend. It's okay. Carlos now taking things a little personally. Wow, the players are going to have a meeting. got a little hotter here in Melbourne. Yeah, Petra, I'm not exactly sure uh, from the end of the last point of the last game to the when Rafa finally hit a first serve there, but with the board meeting at the net, it was a very long time, that's for sure.
I think to me it looks like Dennis has come out with a premeditated uh, plan to have a crack if he takes too long. Yes. And, and, and you know, I'm not sure he got the last one right either. With with I, I understand that Rafa can it can rub you the wrong way because he is pushing the limit there constantly. But But as Carlos said, he's got eight seconds left. What do you want me to do about it? Yeah, I'm just not sure he wants to be that distracted at this moment, to be honest. He needs to find his game. He needs to find balls in court. He needs to become a little more effective than he has been so far, particularly on the returns. Yeah, and Petch, I think the last guy in the world that you're going to put off with that kind of stuff is Rafa Nadal. 100%. And there's a very good illustration of that as well. And that would be in the shape of one of his head-to-heads. Thomas Burdick. <laughs> Thomas Burdick beat Rafa in Madrid in his uh, home nation. 7-6, seven, 6-3, six, six, three, seven, six, eight, six in the break. It was a tense affair. Of Madrid as well. It wasn't Rafa's favourite place to play. And he shushed the crowd at the end of it, did Thomas Burdick. Shushed the crowd. Rafa went up to him, shook his hand. He said, That's not good. Shouldn't have done that. They then play in Monaco the next year. Six love the opening set to Rafa on the clay. He didn't lose to him for 18 straight matches. I agree with you. I'm not sure you want to poke this particular bear. It's like it's like the the young bull and the old bull, isn't it? That was a little meeting of the minds and and all Rafa was saying is, I know exactly what you're doing, I know exactly what you're doing. Don't be doing it. Wish we'd had a mic up there to be able to hear exactly what the exchange was. I thought it was uh, significant that Rafa gave a little touch to Dennis, yep. just to kind of like, calm down, son. It's okay. Everything's good. Interesting to see whether there's a few more of those types of serve. Again, a very much off pace second serve delivery from Shapovalov. Seen a couple of those now early on in the second set. Not feeding Nadal with pace. It's interesting to me, Patch, that first point on the on the deuce side on second serve Rafa stayed deeper we saw the other night where he played two sets of absolute stellar tennis returning the ball early and then the third set went deep and and all of a sudden it changed the complexion of the match not in his favor Split step, take, get some balance and use real feel on that drop volley rather than just run through it there. 
and he bunted that way too deep. He instantly lost the point once he hit that too deep, that volley. Fitz, can you call that a drop volley if it lands on the service line? That wasn't And it's one. actually moving through the court. It wasn't like it was, you know, yeah. bouncing straight up and down. I don't think it was one or the other, was it? Just interesting to me, guys, that uh, Rafa again now has, has made a decision within this game to return deeper on second serves after having so much success in the first set, standing up and taking the ball early. Not really sure about that decision making. I mean, the, the old adage don't change a winning game. Floating around in no man's land there. Bolting, Dutton. He does seem to extemporize his performances at times, doesn't he? Could you use smaller words, please, Patch? <laughs> it just makes it up. It's sort of just completely instinctive, not really as structured as you would expect. a couple of times and then close the door 2-1 Shapovalov second set I don't know Brad if you saw Medvedev's last game yesterday when he broke Cressy in that match over there he actually changed his position in the last game right up on the baseline stopped returning from so deep but you're absolutely right that wasn't working for him he was creating break points but he couldn't actually take any that, that just seems like a very... It, it feels as though Rafa's already playing the long game, balls and court. Yeah, it just seems strange that you change a winning game. I mean, I, I don't want to question one of the greatest players of all time and his decision-making. Maybe, maybe he's trying to make a point, I can beat you from anywhere in the court. But we saw him do this the other night. He played two sets, returning early in the court, getting the return on his opponent very quickly, and then made a decision to go deep in the third set and lost the third set from returning in that position. He, he hasn't done a great job returning from deep on those last uh, those last returns in that last game. Dennis doing a better job of staying alive here in the second set than he did in the first. Got down early. Rafa very sharp out of the blocks. A little bit of. Uh, Disagreement between the two players as well at the start of the second has just added to the intensity of the contest. Carlos Bernardes, wonderful umpire, even better human. You don't poke the bear, but there's there's a slight change in atmosphere here, isn't there, between the two? Raf has slowed down a little bit here. Shapovalov is making a stand. He's try he's competing. Oh, 
early days in the second, hasn't served quite as well in this opening <laughs> game in a bit here, which has just allowed Shapovalov a, a few looks at second serves, trying to work something out. was talking about about that extreme grip for Shapovalov on the return which perhaps just hinders him a little bit in terms of being able to block effectively particularly on the backhand side didn't need to do anything there 15, so Rafa quite often comes out firing on all cylinders wins the first set quite often when he does that he, he doesn't lose too much from there but but this is a flat spot he's he's dropped right off now I don't know whether it had anything to do with the the verbal confrontation or, or not but but it's changed slightly here Is the Sun playing any part at the moment from that end that Rafa's at as a left-hander, Brad? Petch, yeah, I think it is. If you, you guys can't see from where you are, obviously, but from, from down here as a, as a lefty, you're tossing almost right into the Sun right now. Yeah, Brad, you're in Australia. You're in the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> you're a left-hander, and it's mid-afternoon. Yes, the sun is having an effect. If there's no clouds in the sky, it's, it's difficult. But it is difficult for both these guys. It still does rise in the east and set in the west, though, Brett. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Chris. I knew it. Uh, it's a private joke, everybody. I apologise, but uh, Brad. I don't Thomas, want anybody to think that no. I'm the one who said that. No, I, I've got to. I heard that story the other night from Brad, but he did not think that the sun rose in the west and set in the east in the southern hemisphere. He did not. The toilets do flush backwards, though, <laughs> don't they? I haven't noticed that. Game. That was a scrappy game by his high standards so far today. He'll be very happy he scrambled to safety. Two games on. Now, when he played Karen Hashinoff a couple of rounds ago, he was firing on all cylinders for two sets, standing up a bit closer to the base on returning. Then for the third set, he went back to return. Hashinoff got into the match. I, I, I didn't understand why he did that, and today he's changed two after winning playing well in the first winning it he's, he's he's changed i'm not sure why he does that but you guys may have a a better thought process on that now oh, fitz that was the match that i was alluding to and i have the same question he's stepping back in again now gee and he stands up brad he hits a really good short arm jolt for a return because he has to uh, he has to reduce his swing pattern a little bit to take the ball early and he gets the ball back sharp and fast gets an error so i i like it more when he's up a bit more but he's he's got his game plan he knows his game better than anyone else easier to make but I mean yeah he goes the wrong way doesn't he it's a very tough shot to go line here yeah, it's you know you've got to pick your poison to be honest but that surely wasn't the right one well he was caught I think he, he had a, a, a 
you know, less than even chance of winning either way he goes, I think, here. But by going across court, there was, he just left himself way out of position. Tactical error, probably. Bjorkland in the box there. Shapovalov's girlfriend. She actually uh, just outside the world's top 200 now in the WTA. Lost in the last round of qualies here. Actually getting coached by Jonas Bjorkman at the moment, of course. Wonderful Swedish player. He also uh, worked a lot with Andy Murray as well. Yeah, Petch in Stockholm. I thought he had just started dating her just before the final so he could get the Swedish crowd on his side. That's when it first became public, wasn't it? That, that when he won the title. Yeah, during the tournament, they actually talked about it a little bit in the, uh, the post-match presentation. Left. Second service. Again, Lovely four points in a row there from Love 30 down for Shapovalov, 3-2. Shapovalov leads by three games to two. Those are those mini moments, Fitzy, where Raffle just been a little disappointed that he couldn't elevate his level. That's where he usually pushes through. Yeah, he, he just feels a bit flat to me here, certainly compared to the adrenaline he had in the first set. Chapovalov has been able to settle down a little bit. There was a bit of pressure there, wasn't there, at Love 30, but and he'll be glad that he's out of that trouble. But uh, he, he's in this match now, to a degree. I mean, I just don't know if or what effect that might have had, that little confrontation. Paul Kitt's doing a wonderful job here. It's not always easy when the temperatures are in the 30s and the real feel is even higher. But uh, for us who are enjoying it here, it is a beautiful day. left-handers left in the draw playing each other 20 started this particular tournament 18 in the world's top 100 right now Sit quickly please thank you just looking at Rafa's record through the majors obviously he's played quite a few lefties over the years that we talked about Roland Garros run was when he played the most he played four in a row in Roland Garros but that's go Niemann De Vilda and Bellucci in the opening round. Sit quickly, please. Players already. Thank you. of a left-hander, of course, in the previous round. One of the, the great tie breaks of all time that was against Manorino. You saw that live? Yes. Half your luck. I, I haven't seen it. There was a lot of... 
conjecture. A lot of talk about that around the around the grounds, wasn't there? Memorable, eh? Yeah. Some amazing shot making on set points up and down from both players. Inroads being made in the second set here by the 14th seed. Of course, it has been in the world's 15. top 10. He seems to be more used to the bounce from Rafa's forehand into his backhand. He's handling that a bit better now. Not miss timing balls and giving away free points on that wing at the moment. Disappointed he's missed that, Brad. Is it the right shot against somebody like Rafa? Absolutely not, Petch. It's my first thought. It's just bad geometry from that position. You're, you're on a relatively high degree of defense there. That ball has to go deep and cross. I think that's where the gunslinger in him gets him in trouble sometimes. I must admit, I didn't see him win this point through this whole defensive uh, series here. I thought he was behind the eight ball the whole way, but he made Rafa play the extra ball. Good stuff. He's getting his teeth into this second set here. The man they named the stadium after. He throws one away. Brad, after you mentioned his, his hips are going one way and his racket head's going the other, I can't help, I can't see anything else but that now. <laughs> he does seem off balance on that forehand quite often and, and on the backhand wing as well when he returns. What an amazing pickup off the return it was. And again, credit to the 22 year old down the other end. He's hung in this rally. Rafa almost makes this, doesn't he? Round the net post. So close, guys. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we talk about it all the time. But one of the biggest adjustments you see at this level with these players is, is court position adjustments. Dennis is playing a little bit deeper in the court now, willing to cover a little bit more ground and, and making more balls. That forehand is just vicious, isn't it? Advantage, no doubt. But it's got the height of a rainbow and the bounce off. I mean, it is just an incredible shot. It is so unique. I wonder if he's ever followed through into his head with that, with that follow through. It's straight up, isn't it? Like almost past his left ear. Imagine if that cracked him in the head. I think he's a bit more talented than us. <laughs> 
Is it only me that does that stuff? No, I've done it. Coming in. A little bit of an arm wrestle, Brad, isn't it? It is absolutely fits right now. This game is tense as can be. Shapovalov missing a second serve return previously. He felt like Rafa got a little bit of a, a leg up there, and then he throws in the double fault. That's one of the things right there, guys, that separates Denis Shapovalov from the top guys. I, I feel like so many of the top guys find a way to put that ball in play. Even if they bunt it back, they yep. lob it, they float it deep in the court, but they make their opponent play off of a great serve like that. Yep. Even if it looks ugly, get it back. Some extreme shot making from Shapovalo. Yeah, he, he's found his rhythm and his range, hasn't he, Dennis? Yes. Now, not missing, not giving as many free balls away. He gave that return away a couple of points ago, but once he's in the rally now, he's he's timing the ball way better than he was. You guys agree that he's moved back a little bit. He's also shaping the ball more. He's taking the net out of the play, not missing very much in the net at all anymore. This is a good passage of play for the fans. And if he does one thing after this match, and oh, after this tournament, if he improves his slice and his backhand volley, he's going to instantly be a better player. He would have kept that ball in play too with a, with a more compact slice, knowing where the racket head is. He's got a lot of upside, I think. Fortress Nadal on serve. Three still Nadal. yet to offer up a breakpoint opportunity. And he's playing this match on his terms at the moment, as you can see there. 81% of the shots he's hitting off the ground are on his forehand. That's exactly what he would like. Lots more backhands for Shapovalov. Although, as uh, Fitzy and Brad are saying, he has definitely found a bit of a groove. But these next couple of points will be very fascinating early on in this game. Expect a stern reaction from Rafa after that test. in position early and just hit a neutral ball up the middle which is dangerous no. this 15. straight to Rafa's forehand that's just poor recognition fits and Rafa shanked that ball before that it got a little bit of angle on it but it it gave Dennis all day long and if he just scooched up a tiny bit yep. more he could have unloaded on that ball yep. could have gone anywhere with it
easy to sit here and be critical, isn't it? But uh, fully executed drop shot gave Rafa plenty of time. Mm -hmm. Then Rafa gives him an easy one here, really, and he goes the wrong way. Yeah, again, Dennis should have won that point. Interesting to me, guys, and, and I do have to say one of the things that stood out in the final in Stockholm that Dennis was very emotionally up and down. He was getting into his box a lot over some really like odd little things. We saw him after that last point pointing to his head and then and then kind of yelling at his box. And he can get very emotionally distraught at times. Interesting passage of play. Yeah. And he's playing almost in a, a, a bizarre fashion here, isn't he? For a few of these points, choice of shot making has been different, to say the least. Yeah, one of the notes I have, Brad, on him is just stay with him every single service game because when you've looked look at the way that he plays, there tends to be one opening a set at least one bad service game and you just need to be ready for it that you can grab a couple of points where he's a bit loose and that's what's happened at the start of this game well, Rafa actually not hitting the ball particularly well there he's let him off yeah no absolutely patch i totally agree with you and and i agree Good with what job. you said at the end there that that's the second ball in this game that that rafa just mistimed caught that at the very bottom of the frame barely cleared the net with it delicate moments here for shapovalov Feels like a rubber ball in an elevator is mine right now. 13 quarter. Now there's just some interesting shot selection going on. That that top spin full swing volley by Dennis from just inside the baseline. It's a little bit uh, questionable. He either needs to take a little bit of space and get up to it more before it dropped, or or give it some ground and just settle back into the point. But. He's going to have to make some good decisions here to stay in this game. Well, to be honest, Shapovalov's broken himself for a second time in the match. Nadal leads by a set and 4-3. Yutaka. Kamura, his physical coach, I don't think he'll be concerned about him physically, but just this is the biggest concern. He's such a wonderful player, but as Brad said, he just gets this temperamental part of his game that just it's almost like a red mist that comes down and suddenly he just cannot structure his points in the way that he needs to. And somebody as good as Rafa and as mentally solid as him is going to take advantage. That wasn't even a very good game at all by the Spaniard. That's a real gift in the quarterfinals of a major. Significant couple of games for Nadal and his support crew. Massive, massive disappointment for this man. He's in a huge deficit now. Six quicker, please. Thank you. It's always a great day when you come and see Rafa on the order of play. 
And if you're a fan, it's looking like it's going to be a very good afternoon currently as well. Brad, where does Dennis go from here? Uh, good question, yep. Pitch. And, and I mean, I was watching him on the changeover, and he's throwing his arms up at his at his box. He's kind of staring in anger at his box the entire time. So you just have to wonder where he is mentally coming out to return for this game. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him take a couple of angry swings here, trying to add some pace to, to balls. Maybe I've just been completely oblivious to it. Rafa just took his second ball from the ball kit there. Is it? Have I been that unobservant? No, you never are, Petch. Uh, uh, that, that was the first time in the match. He, he hasn't been doing that. doing it again isn't he and is that do you think that's because of the sweat do you think it's it's weighing heavily the ball in his pocket 100 percent. i think he's doing it purely because <laughs> gee that would have been nasty that had come over it was a deliberate attempt i think there at a a low short slice. 15. Oh. Yeah, no doubt Fitz. That was a that was a planned short ball. Wasn't really a drop shot. But yeah, Patch, back to your question. I, I think he's he's pretty damp right now, all up and down, and he's just decided that he doesn't want to take the balls out of his pocket because they're they're probably getting heavy and weighted down a little bit. So expect a change of clothes at the end of this set. I would say that's a good possibility, Fitz. That ball just Dirty. skidded Dirty. off the line. It stayed so low, it actually went under Dennis's racket. He's struggled with hot days in the past, hasn't he? I mean, he's obviously always got through them. We've talked about how he struggles with damp conditions on the clay, but there haven't been Mediterranean days every time he's won Roland Garros, have there? Remember Dominic Team in the final one year? It's maybe back in 2018. <laughs> Rafa actually put tape under his Ball sweatbands in, to try and get the moisture to go into the kind of tape because these sweatbands were falling down his arms and like going over his wrists actually got so tight while well, he was almost cramping by the end of that match Better return from Shapovalov hasn't found the backhand too often of Nadal off the return. Did so there. Probably should have taken a backhand there, guys. Didn't need to try and get around to play a forehand. I was going to say, you know, we, we all are aware of how slow Rafa plays at time, and he lets the clock run down to about five, four, or three seconds almost every time. But for some reason, for me at least, it, it's 
it doesn't feel that slow. I think part of it's because he has so many little routines that you can watch and pay attention to that it, it keeps your mind engaged despite the fact that he is taking a long time. He was so close on the clock there. Petch, he was, he was over the clock. He, was, he definitely did not start his motion prior to the clock running down to zero that time. Dennis could go back and have a legitimate argument if he, uh, if he could have them go to the uh, video replay on that one. Not a bad idea, that. That's for service. Now he can take as long as he likes. Yeah, I don't know if I'm a fan of the VR idea, Petch. I like human error. Doesn't make me look as bad. That's why we get on so well. Let for service. Because you make a lot of mistakes, you mean? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I need explanation. This point is taking forever, isn't it? Again. No. No. I might have dropped a set or two in the time that that point <laughs> took to take. It was pedestrian, but Fitzy, it was priceless. Yeah, well, it consolidated. You know, you just get the feeling, like Rafa, I mean, he's not as young as he used to be. I know he's still a bull and, uh, you know, he's, he's got all this energy still, but he, he's definitely been flatter in this set than the first. And he's just trying to get to the line here, I think, in the second set. Go and change the clothes and come out a little refreshed. Guys, that last point was a good indication of why we put the shot clock in, though. Early on, people used to call it the Rafa rule. Yeah, so so there is a little bit of annoyance built up over the years for, you know, guys playing him. And, and as much as we love him, you know, he, he does take a long time. And, and uh, I think Shapovalov early on was just trying to make his point, but maybe just didn't get it quite right. That's all. Fifteen. He needs to get it very right now, Fitz. He's got to get through this game, make Rafa serve for the set. Shapovalov, who wasn't been, who hasn't been happy with Rafa, is only a couple of seconds actually quicker than him, and he's also over the shot clock. He's been over the shot clock. Yes. How how often? Do you know? Average, 29 seconds. So Carlos is not calling either of them. number I believe is also from now so obviously we have to wait for Carlos to call the score yeah here we go now now it starts well it actually hasn't now it started yeah that, that's a big delay isn't it no that's wonder totally you under Carlos's control he's the one that's setting the clock and when it starts
No wonder you nodded off a second ago and I had to poke you in the ribs <laughs> to wake you up, Mark. <laughs> no, that's not true, folks. Gee, he's, he's on a flat spot of his own here, Shapovalov. 13, he's Fulton. Right now, he, he doesn't look like asking uh, Rafa to serve it out. He's playing three different opponents at the moment, and they're all in his own head. Not the man down the other end of the court. The 20-time major winner, which is what he needs to focus on. It's set point, Nadal. Please. Will that flick of genius help him survive a little bit genius. of a back and forth with a fan in the crowd there as well? A brilliant shot here, though, from the Canadian. Yeah, I think it's a window into how fragile Dennis's mind can be at times, though. Pitch. You know, he's let that fan kind of get into his head as well as the other three people you said he's fighting right now. talked about several games ago when he approached a cross court from that low short position this time he goes down the line as Mark Petchy thought he should have but he still has made to make it a, a tough volley but he, he covered it well didn't he I mean this is the more percentage play but the danger is you're going to wrap his forehand great interception anticipation skill Very well navigated. Nadal leads by five games to four. It's always interesting to see how thick the veneer is for these players when they're competing against the very best competitors that the game's ever had, and Rafa certainly is that. That was a that was a triumph really for Shapovalov at that stage of what has just unfolded over the last 20 minutes or so. But the harder of the two tasks coming up, trying to break Nadal, and it would be uh, certainly against the grain as well. He is yet to carve out a breakpoint opportunity. Intrigue, it's had moments of inspiration. Time. Six wicked blues, thank you. But those moments of inspiration have been few and far between for Shapovalov. Is it just an illusion that he's competitive? Certainly will feel it if he goes down two sets to love, but of course, Rafa has three times in his career lost from that position, and once was 12 months ago here against Tsitsipas in the same stage. Since but it is a long road back, back for the Canadian if he doesn't him. find a way to break here. Well, please. His third ace, timely one.
kind of felt as though that rally should have been done on the third shot of the rally from Shapovalov. He hit such a beautiful middle ball off 15, his backhand, and he 15. got exactly the response he was looking for on his forehand, and he did nothing with it. And then try to pull the trigger on that one. Petch, I go back to what I said from the very beginning of the match, and Rafa played a very neutral point there. He was, he was basically just putting balls in play and waiting for Dennis to make an error. Turns that short in the court, Rafa has those two options. You don't know which way he's going to go. He can go either way just equally as uh, effectively. And uh, just waited for Chapovala there to encroach to one side. So he stands at set point here in the second set to lead two sets to love. off the second set and he duly does take a two sets to lovely and I would imagine there will be a leave of absence of the court as he gets himself redressed and Shapovalov also taking the opportunity to leave the court as well He's still got the same length of journey to take today, Shapovalov, and he did an hour and 40 minutes ago. And the one thing you would have learned in the last hour and 40 minutes is you just cannot have any moments of mental letdown. It's cost him dearly. He's still learning in that capacity, isn't he? I mean, you expect Rafa's first serve to be a higher percentage than most. He doesn't bomb it as much as a lot of the players these days, but it's effective. He uses it to set up his first ground stroke. He's just been solid. Take a look at the gig stats here. Shapovalov has done some good work in that second set to at least try and keep himself in it. Those hitting loads, 100 Ks on average, the shots, and you can see he's had more of those. But unfortunately for him, he hasn't been able to move Rafa around. Rafa control in the middle of the court, just like a squash court. If you do that, you're going to be in good shape. Beautiful Melbourne. He's still not ready to play. Yeah, you gotta call him. Yeah, this has been one of the talking points of the contest. Somehow it rattled Shapovalov when it didn't really need to. He needed to find better tennis, not try and put Rafa off his game. was the end of the game that really put the end to any hopes of him trying to square things up at a set of piece. Carlos Moyer, a man that knows how it is to be world number one to win majors, knows how significant that pivot point potentially was in the second set. Brad, do you think it will be for somebody like Shapovalov to fix that kind of temperamental? He is at times, isn't he? He's like a, he's like a first generation broadband router. You've got to like continually reboot it. It's, and today again, you've seen that kind of creep into his game where sometimes the shot making is fantastic. And again, then suddenly it just goes stone cold. Well, his, his emotional up and downs are, are a lot like his game. You can see how they, they match with each other. Uh, he's, he's an exceptional shot maker. 
but then at times he struggles to recognize when he has to kind of pull back and be a little bit more consistent. And uh, the emotional side is very much the same. And, and it, I think it, I think it's something that definitely, and I'm sure people that have been involved with him, maybe Jamie is right now, but you know, it's something that definitely has to be addressed. And, and one of the things you see most often uh, that, that is a, a common thread with all the top players is how stable they are through the ups and downs of a match or a tournament. And Dennis isn't quite there emotionally. And then th those emotions carry over to, you know, his mentality and the decision making that he has about playing his shots. And it just hurts him. Bit of YMCA going on here. Yeah, it's interesting to me, Fitzy, you know, some of the greatest champions that we've had. And, and this whole kind of getting irritated to your box has obviously crept in, it seems, exponentially over the last decade or so. But if you look at the great champions and Serena, uh, if you look at Roger, Rafa, I know Novak occasionally will do it, but it's a, it's a pretty once in a match, yeah. it's maybe twice, it's a he rarity. gets it out and, and gets on with it. If you're going to you know, imitate the best, why are they not more players imitating that rather than having a go at their boxes. Yeah, uh, emotionally they're not as good, I guess. And, uh, you know, it is an emotional game. No one can deny that. And when you're in the heat of battle and you, it's a one-on-one -on -one sport, it's it's intense out there. But, but yes, I think it is a sign of weakness. Uh, just a small one. Sometimes they get away with it, but an unnecessary one. It's actually a bit of a... I don't like it. It's a bit of a scourge on the game for me. I, I just don't see a reason why you have to chastise your box when you're the guy with a racket in your hand. Fitz, I've always asked my players to imagine a, another one-on-one -on -one type sport where, you know, you, you miss and throw your hands up at your corner uh, in irritation. Boxing, what do you think would happen? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be looking at the ceiling. And you're basically punching yourself in the face when you do it because you're just, you're hurting your own ability to maintain your focus and concentration and execute your game the way you want to. And I do think that tennis players are probably, of all sports, are probably the greatest saboteurs, self-saboteurs of all athletes in all sports. Time. Strong statement from Brad, yeah. and I wouldn't disagree with him. It is a strong statement. And, but, you know, you, you mentioned the great players don't tend to do it, and uh, wouldn't wouldn't the uh, the light bulb go off? It hasn't yet. Deflecting responsibility. Not a great quality. Do you think there's players out there that actually play better because of Third it? Stats. You'll never know if they continually do it, do you? You've, you've got to see both sides of them. Yeah. I think historically there's been very, very few fits. Maybe Mac and maybe Jimmy Connors. Everyone a little on tender hooks at the start of this third set to see what Shapovalov's going to produce here. Yeah, he needs to come out of the box very quickly here after a break in play. Uh, this is dangerous. I mean, that ball there from Rafa tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. Everything no, you need to know. I'm going to put this with a bit of height percentage. up the middle of the court because I believe there's a good chance you're going to miss it. No stress on him at all.
gutsy move. And Raf is a long Didn't way back there. Yeah. I mean, well played. Stealth mode activated. Needed to do something different. It won't work every time. But it's worked twice in a row. Rafa saw him coming, tried to produce something a little better this time. Showing some versatility, good to see. Change up there, a couple of servant volleys. Uh, that had trouble written all over it at the beginning of the third set there for, for Dennis. Yeah, that was impressive from him. And we're always looking for a bookmark moment to go back to and look at if it does turn around. And certainly that love 30 second serve, servant volley point could be it. Doesn't take much gasoline to get the fire burning again, does it? Look at the reaction after this miss. It's an expansive shot. It's a high tariff shot. Well, at least it was with an open hand that he hit those strings with. If, if you clench your fist, your knuckle, and you hit your knuckles on those, on those strings, it can cut it to shreds. 
You don't want that. It'd be uncomfortable bleeding out of the, the knuckles Bones of in. one of your yeah. hand, hands. Guys, you just have the the sense that if, if Denis Shapovalov was a teapot, he would be percolating just below a boil constantly. Do you percolate tea? In a percolator. I, I think you just percolate you get the hot, coffee. You get the water hot in the percolator. Br Brad, we have... And then you pour it into the cup. Brad, we have an Englishman in the box here. He, he will tell us about tea. with honey <laughs> that's okay if it's Earl Grey <laughs> one game on I, I need an answer about you, you don't percolate tea do you you do percolate tea oh, of course God. you do Fitz that, right. that's, that's the, the little machine that gets the water hot for you and that, that's called a kettle <laughs> such a farmer thank you <laughs> Fair call. That's a nice body serve. Guys, back to uh, Dennis Shapovalov and his, his emotions and where he's at. Even in that game while he was quiet, after the first point he came over and he kept glancing at the box, glancing at the box. And that's why I was saying, you just feel that he's right on the edge the whole time. Don't too I think that, yeah, I, young players, I think, should be taught to, look, it's your responsibility out there. You know, and, and I know it's difficult, it's, it, it is emotional. But uh, it, it, if you need something to lean on, a crutch, It's good to need a crutch to lean on, so you know that's why the great players don't do it. I think. 30, 15. Well, at the same time, Fitz, I think you mentioned it before. You know, it's just another area outside of his his swing mechanics or or tactics that he's playing that he can improve in. He can he can get so much better. Yeah. He's already in the top ten, and he has so many areas that he can improve in. That may have the biggest effect of all for him. Yeah, but it will be the hardest one to rectify. I mean, it's a good one to rectify because it is a, you are able to do it intellectually. If you don't have the physicality, you don't have the fast twitch muscles, you don't have the stroke production, you, you know, you're on a hard end nothing, but you can fix that if you want to, but it's probably the hardest thing to do. Some good serve and volley movements in this third set. 14, 13. Tough couple of holds, but successful for Shapovalov at the start of the third, 2-1. Two one. And while he's on serve, he's still very dangerous. We do know that. We do know that he has the capability just to start ripping winners and running right out there, and that will be something that Rafa will be just a little bit concerned about. Those that aren't concerned are the ones out here. Listen to a bit of music. Having a little drink, wandering the ground, seeing 
potentially some wonderful doubles, some stars of the future, of course, with the juniors on around the grounds today as well. <laughs> and a bit of dad dancing as well. Don't always need that. <laughs> they put in, put in some beautiful areas, haven't they? They've landscaped these gardens so nicely for so many of the fans to be able to sit out there. And if you don't have a ticket to Rod Laver Arena or Margaret Court, you can still enjoy the best matches. So many things I love about the Australian Open. Obviously, it's summer here and cold winter back in the UK, but also some of the touches that the, when you are allowed maximum amount number of fans here as well, Fitzy, that I think the Australian Open do better than anywhere else. Your ability to buy a grounds pass and then come in on the day and upgrade it if you want, if you want to go and see a player on Margaret Court Arena or Rod Laver Arena, if there's obviously space for it, if it's not sold out, you can come in just on a ground pass like this, enjoy the day, go and find the booth, get your ticket upgraded. One of the other things they do on John Kane Arena that's really great as well, you go sit on the the court for the day but if you do need to go off to get something to eat they'll give you a little 30 minute pass out ticket which means you can come back and sit in your ticket in your seat again not many places do that for you as well a lot of thought goes into making this so fan friendly Melbourne's been pretty friendly to this champion so far this year, unbeaten. So you can see the heat haze. Picked up his 89th career title earlier this year. A couple of hours that have put Nadal in pole position to move through to the semi-finals of the Australian Open again. Where he's been six previous times, right? For his seventh, it will time with Ivan Lindel. This Federer has been here to the last four on 15 occasions. Novak nine, but he has a, a perfect success rate when he's got there. Of course, the serve. Side for Rafa Australia really has been that uh, of his nine defeats in the last eight at majors seven of them have actually come here in Melbourne but Two, so one. far that doesn't look as though it's going to be the same fate that befalls him this year and a little jog back as we look at the replay there of Shapovalov from Rafa keen to get in position early for this game He's been probing the defences of Shapovalov early in this third set for a break. Can he find a way through now? <laughs> Certainly a different tactic he's starting to use, isn't it? He's coming in more. Rafa might stand in a bit closer if he's going to do that, you would think. He's so far back. And just for something different here, Shepovalov finding different ways to win points. Yeah, if he's going to serve 185 second serves and serve and volley behind them and Rafa goes up on the baseline as he did at the start of this match, he's not going to get in very far. Rafa can just massage the return back.
30 لحظه Thirty fifteen. Fourteen, fifteen. Game. Excellent game. And a positive reaction to his corner there from Shapovalov. Three, two, third set. I've got to say, Brad, a, a normally a two sets to love and on serve in the third. I'd kind of be feeling as though we should put a fork in it and it's done, but it's just something that's telling me that there might be some life breathed into this one. Well, I mean, the fact is, Dennis is so dangerous. If he gets on a hot streak, he can just start lighting some balls up and, and he could all of a sudden pull off a break and a hold real quick and and uh, this set could look very, very different. But at the same time, you know, if Rafa continues to be extremely solid in what he's doing, it's going to be tough for Dennis. So one of the things I wanted to mention, Petch, is that uh, I, I've just been aware, I don't know if you guys ever watch it or not, but we know all of Rafa's little ticks and stuff, but he takes this very circuitous route to get to his bench every time. pendulum of emotions and fluctuations and oscillations that Shapovalov has gone through already in this match. Just as you could see at that change of suddenly there was a real look of defiance from the Canadian. He's just got to think about one set. You know, he's got, he's got to think about this because swings and roundabouts, there's, there's peaks and valleys in five set matches. That's the beauty of them to a large degree. If he can get on the board, he's got to think about one set if he can win this third set, things can change. positive body language we've seen in nearly two hours from Shapovalov here. Well, we haven't seen Dennis win too many first points in the game, especially on a double like that. And that's what I was saying before. He's so dangerous here. He can just light a ball up in this point and it's super quick. He's at love 30 and has a look in the game. Bit of a radio issue here. Here we go, Brad. Now all of a sudden he's got some adrenaline. And it is hard. It is difficult to maintain a level for three straight sets for any player. So Shapovalov, now all of a sudden, this atmosphere has changed. He's got a chance here. 
and now for me the question for shop oh is does he try to temper is game here a little bit or is he going to try and pull the trigger on something very quickly again How good was that second serve? And a volley. Serve and volley <laughs> attempt. <laughs> 168K, second serve from Nadal out wide on the juice side for a lefty. Yeah. That's just too good. It's interesting to see Dennis get beat on a left-handed kick serve on that. Just not used to seeing those kind of serves very often. Nadal capitalized on some gifts in the opening couple of sets to have his advantage, but that advantage may get eroded into right now. A couple of doubles already in this game and a couple of breakpoint chances for the very first time in the match for Shapovalov. Interested to see where he goes here, Brad. Obviously, the safer serve for Nadal is down the tee because it's going to come back more centrally. He's not going to get one probably flash past him. Possibly the better serve for him is to take Chapeau right off the court. Body back in. And it was a good heavy serve that bounced up and just got away from Dennis, wasn't it? Deuce. And there again, guys, we see the body language from Chapeau right afterwards. Man, bud, you're still in this game. You're at Deuce. You've, you've been all over him in this game. Let's keep some positive energy, some positive emotion. below average on pace on the previous point on the break point that above average a little quicker from Nadal often see that from him on the juice points trying to put this game to bed to plot a recovery Three by Rafael Nadal. Well, you know, the, the human condition too, when you've got an, when you've got a, an opportunity and all, you think, here's my chance, I'm going to grab this with two hands, and you don't, you, you've got to go back to the drawing board. So you end up being a little flat sometimes, and that's what Shapovalov will be feeling right now. Yeah, they knew how important that game was, didn't they? More importantly, he did. Did not want to give Shapovalov any momentum because there's been a big shift, as you can see here. Canadian playing a lot more of his tennis in the right color paint. 57% of them inside the baseline here in the third set. He looks incredibly off balance sometimes, Shapovalov, of a shot like that. I mean, it was a good return. I wouldn't say it was a great return, but the way he fell off it, Ball's coming too quick through the court to try and drop step on, in my opinion, Patrick. He's got to he's got to find his balance and neutralize that ball. Oh. 
he tries to drop to step there and, and take a full swing. You got to shorten the backswing, make your swing compact on that. Just use the pace. Oh, he's taken a fleck of paint. And a similar type of risk that we saw Nadal take on the Love 30 point in the previous game. That was a millimeter, wasn't it? Maybe two. What a serve. Go ahead, Fitz. Well, he didn't open the face, did he? Wrong grip. Yeah. Grip's too far over. It's hard for him to open the face. He comes to that ball with a completely square face. The bottom edge of the racket has to be leading there. Opportunity missed by the great man. Shishapa was so close to the net here. There was not a lot of room, and you can see where he split steps just off center, which just made that gap a little narrower. There was a lot of room over the top, especially down the backhand side for Nadal here. If it had gone over the top, but that is one of his favorite shots. Just his third. You can see him pressing here a little bit, though. He has to, I think, on the serve. It's a, it's a terrific weapon of his. And, you know, that he's mixing in a few serve volleys. He's going after the second serve. He did that at Love 15 in this game. So a few risks, necessary risk, probably, creeping in here. Again, 180 Ks coming in from Shapovalov. He's living right on the edge, right on the extremities of his own talent. And getting pushed to produce some of his best tennis by one of the world's best. Again, Shapovalov. And credit to the Canadian that is delivered. A 10th ace. leads by four, gains the three. Well, again, look back at some bookmark moments. The serve and volley at Love 30 in the opening game of the third. The second serve at Love 15 that is three millimeters in. And those kind of moments have just allowed Shapovalov to have some traction here in the third set. And there'll be some edgy moments coming up potentially here for the Spaniard if he's going to get this done in straight sets today. I mean, I know things shouldn't surprise us, but are you surprised at how well he's come back already in the season, Rafa, from the injuries that he had last year? Yes. Yeah, I am. Um, I guess it helps when you you come to Australia, you get used to these conditions early by winning a tournament. He had a default in the semi-finals of, of that tournament too, didn't he? And so winning that helped a lot.
that's where the action is inside the Rod Laver Arena. Huge improvements over the years to this particular stadium as well. Mark, that particular pod there is where the players hang out through the whole tournament. Two levels of restaurant. Does your pass get you in there? Oh, it might. <laughs> it might. Um, and then behind that pod is the actual stadium, the original stadium uh, built in the, the the late 80s. So it's it's a facility that just keeps on getting better keeps on giving by the way as does this man here who's about to serve keeps giving to us as tennis fans his own fans as well an exceptional and unique champion And that word champion has a real connotation. It means something. True champions have, have the ethic of this guy. times numerous times that we've read his own sporting obituary as well isn't it because of the injuries that he sustained and people feeling as though his career is over but he is the sole scriptwriter of this particular story and he's defied what many have thought was possible and he may well get to script the fairy tale ending here in Melbourne as well. Remember in 2018 when Roger won his 20th here? We, so many people in the sport thought he wouldn't win another one. Can we have another similar story? I believe so. I believe it's possible. There's a lot of good tennis to be played and a lot of great players. We've also obviously got another champion in the tour, Daniel Medvedev as well, of course. Marin Cilic was here. Felix Oje Aliasim, who knows? Maybe it's going to be his time. Lat for service. Guys expect Rafa to dig in here in this game. I think Dennis is going to have to play a really, really solid game here. I don't think he can give him anything. The wise old owl down there on the center of the court. Ooh. Side of the Ooh. court. Sure. And Shapovalov quickly latched onto it. People again a read on his head fake little cross court forehand and maybe and Nadal also long. overthought this because actually if you look for one cross court probably would have won him the point this time because Shapovalov was tracking for the one down the line.
Paul Tillard. Well done by Dennis so far, guys. Error free game. First serves are coming in. Just got to keep that up. Ninth game of the third set goes to Shapovalov, 5 4. Shapovalov leads by five games to four. Yeah, he did very well there, Brad. That was a good game from him. Emotionally, looked very secure. It was much quieter there, just seemed to be more settled in that game. It was a really nice job. I was concerned when he threw in that double fault. Both guys. Both guys have struggled a little bit when they've seen the kick serve out wide to their backhands on the due side. Just like righties, lefties don't see lefties as much as they do the righties. And both guys look a little bit uncomfortable with that particular serve. There is Shapovalov's girlfriend, Miriam, and well, she still, as you can see, believes that he can turn this around. say before the start of the match that Shapovalov's biggest problem when he takes on top five players isn't holding on to his serve it's creating breaks taking breaks against the very elite and that has proved to be true so far in this match will a little bit of scoreboard pressure perhaps aid him and score his first break it's been a workman-like performance from Rafa here in the third set. I don't think he's hit anywhere near the heights that he did at the start of this match. Just quickly, please. Thank you. Yeah. And I think Shapovalov needs to continue to take some risks. I mean, that's what he does. He, it's, it's in his DNA. But uh, to break here, he's, he's, need to, he's going to have to hit some extraordinary shots. He's capable. He's got to put a few together. Interesting. Rafa with the serve and volley out wide. Love 15. That was almost a forehand topspin lunging volley. Good return, wasn't it? Took that ball early and that, that came out of the middle of the strings on the return for Shapovalov. There's an inch of daylight. Doubles are coming this set. Thank you. Let Good service.
please. game from Nadal a flashing forehand return and a backhand flashing return on the first point and this is what happens this match not over Please, already, thank you thank you It's a crazy game sometimes, guys. The rhythm of our sport. You go through a set and no one really has too many looks. And Dennis had a couple of break points earlier, so he's he's gotten into the Nadal serve a little bit, and then all of a sudden a couple of really good returns, a double fault, and you're down triple set point. Saw his opportunity and he was in the right headspace to take advantage of it. That is a terrific effort after being down two sets to love. He was looking a little on the ropes as well. Let's not forget a couple of times throughout that third set, particularly in the opening game, trailing Love 30. Those moments can be so significant. We saw it with Taylor Fritz last night. Love 30 situation against Tsitsipas in the fourth set in the opening game. Couldn't take advantage, missed a couple of routine backhands, and the match got away from him. Very tidy set from both players but the double faults hurt Nadal. Shapovalov still managing to still hit with a lot of pace. A little bit of a drop off from Rafa in that third set. have changed for them for him and the long journey on the Rod Laver Arena starts now for Shapovalov man that knew about winning never giving up an iconic left-hander we have one of the game's sporting icons on the court and one who's trying to make his name Shapovalov, who's come back from two sets to love down once in his career against Robin Hassa in the Davis Cup back in 2018. But he's lost the other 10 times he's been in that situation. It was the first time he found himself in that situation. It was actually defaulted against Carl Edmund in the Davis Cup when he anger the emotion that we've seen today got too much for him hit the ball and unfortunately hit the umpire learn a lot that day he's learning a lot right now as well find the seats quickly please thank you players are ready Non-volley, I'll call it. It, it. it just wasn't anything, was it? He, in his mind, I think he thought he was going to drop volley this, but just doesn't get it right. It just, it just trampolines off the strings back 
into the midcourt. Why would he change a winning game, though? He, he, he may as well keep coming forward. He's going to lose a few up there. But that's really helped him turn this match around. A bit of serve and volleying, coming to the net a bit quicker in the point, maybe. It's also stopped Rafa getting rhythm because since that opening sequence up to about 5-2 in the opening set, he just hasn't been able to be as good. He's carving out an opportunity here. 15, 13. What a squash shot from the deep corner by Nadal, guys. Just barely cleared the net, stayed so low. Dennis really didn't have a lot of options with that little bunt forehand. his second serve incredibly well on some big points in the last 40 minutes. Can he do so again? Yes, he can. He's got a little bit of a quick step going too, hasn't he? Starting to think positively here. That body language is like a book. That's too good. Electrifying pace off the strings of Shapovalov. And he set up again, Pitch, with a really good kick serve out to the back end of Rafa. Left him reaching for that. He was able to put it in play, but nothing on the ball at all. Once again, the stands a bit of pressure on his serve. Emphatically, one love, Shapovalov fourth. Any concerns for you, Brad, from a physical point of view, just because matches are more emotional and they're more draining, that he hasn't played a lot, obviously, since Roland Garros in the semis where he lost to Novak. I mean, he tried to come back. Washington lost to Lloyd Harris there in three sets and obviously didn't play another match until he played Borankis on the 3rd of January here. Yeah, I mean, if he was a normal human being, I'd say yes, but it, we're talking about Rafa Nadal, and I think he's gotten what he's needed and what he wanted coming down here early to Australia, playing in Sydney. I mean, he's got a title under his belt. Uh, that's building some confidence, the early rounds here. Um, I, I, I think he'll be fine. I think he's I think he's so used to it. He has so many of these kind of situations in the memory banks. I can't imagine that he's going to... He's going to have some kind of a drop-off, really, that's not going to allow him to at least stay competitive in what he's doing in this set. I think Fitz is right. He did. He got a little bit flat last set despite that. I mean, he's still competitive in the set.
My old Davis Cup captain, Love Neil Fraser, down. always used to say, it is very difficult to come from two sets to love down. I even if you look threatening and you get a run on here like Shapovalov has, and you make it two sets all, it is tough to maintain that for three straight sets. So from two sets to love down. So, you know, the odds, I think, still in Rafa's favour. We know what his record's like from two sets to love up. But, you know... Shapovalov has everyone thinking in the stadium right now, doesn't he? Yeah. Certainly has us thinking. Yeah, 12 months ago, he lost from this position, Rafa. He's still human, even if he at times doesn't seem it. Yeah, and Dennis is, just like you said, fits the last couple of return games. He's, he's found the timing a little bit better on the return, that first return of this game. I mean, that was right on the screws, clean as can be. That's what everyone comes to see. One of those little moments where Rafa just pickpockets you. <laughs> That's like a draw shot in golf, isn't it? Outside the, around the outside of the ball and curves that back in. One thing you can never do against Rafa Nadal is let up in the point, and Dennis just Love did. Him. He thought he had the point one on that overhead. He was very casual. Rafa with the forehand from the first row of the stands. It still wasn't an, a, a difficult volley, though. That was a simple volley. He just, he just caught that incredibly late, Brad. He wasn't prepared for it, Fitz. I thought he, he just think he thought he was going to win off the overhead. I think. Wow, that was a big point. Because he actually thought he'd missed the return. He was kind of hanging around, loitering in the backhand corner, not bothering to move, feeling it was going to drift wide. It stayed in, and then he had a glorious opportunity. And it's unlike Nadal not to capitalize on it. Had that forehand down the line that would have given him 15-40 in the third set that he missed when Shapovalov was at the net at his mercy.
Lovely redirect. Good injection of pace off the two-hander. That was a difficult shot. The load in the legs had exploded Building up off the him. court surface to make that happen. Total commitment to the shot. Well, he's certainly not having a crack at his box as much now, and he's playing better. So I'm not sure if that tells us anything. But he, he's, he's single-minded at the moment. He's, he's got a narrow vision of competing, which is really healthy for him. imagination or, or is Rafa's energy not as vibrant I think what is interesting is that he's kind of caught between two return positions at the moment that was sort of halfway between sort of where he either go deep and let the air come out of it or as he was in the first be inside the baseline it's making that return very uncomfortable to hit That's a huge hold, and there's been numerous ones of them in the last hour, and they keep going Shapovalov's way, as does the scoreboard. 2-1, fourth set. Well, credit to him. He's kept himself in a very good mental state for those moments where it looked as though he could be a little fragile and was a little fragile, let's be honest, in the opening couple of sets. But the beauty of five sets is giving him a chance to recover here, rescue the situation, and he's doing it very nicely. Very low number of double faults. He can at times throw in considerable quantity of double faults. But even under pressure today on those big 15-30 moments, he's been serving beautifully. Bjorn Borg said this is a game of a thousand little sprints and you can see all those high intensity changes and sprints that he's put in. Time. Sometimes all you have is hope to sustain you in these moments. But he's starting to turn his box and a lot of people in this stadium into believers that this is a potential turnaround on the cards here. Feel good songs for the crowd. Feel good moments for Canada here at the Australian Open. What's next? That's just my two cents at this point. But I really feel like through the end of the last set, the last couple service games, and now the beginning of this set, that uh, Rafa has just gotten a little bit more passive. He's not dictating the points quite as much as he was early on. He's giving Dennis a little more time to see the ball in general, I feel.
Oh, he's missed it. That's unlucky. Boy, he does track a lot of ground and cover it easily, doesn't he, Shapovalov? Again, another reason for him to keep more balls in court. He can use that athleticism. Just tugged it a bit wide. Look at the difference as well. We talked about him getting inside the court. This has been some significant strategic changes here, and he's also been able to find that backhand of Nadal much more in set three. Look at that. Huge differential there. Beautifully, Nadal expecting the cross court, and the times 15, are a changing. 13. Just a little bit at a time. Shapovalov now has, in his mind, a realistic chance in this match. Oh, the drama of five sets. on the last point of just how much power Shapovalov has at his disposal as well. You do not often see Rafa pretty much guessing, putting all his weight onto one leg. He's so balanced. But that's why everyone's so excited about the Canadian as well, because he can hurt the elite players. quality from Shapovalov in that rally. Penetrating, but also patient. Good use of the middle of the court. I'm keen to know what the wise old owl is thinking down on at courtside, Mark. Well, I'll tell you, it's what I mentioned earlier, is that Dennis is the guy that's dictating right now. Rafa looks like he's he's trying to go to the rope-a-dope little like he was earlier, and he was getting airs in the first couple sets from tennis, but right now Dennis isn't sure. giving anything he's away. He's, he looks like he's got more energy, uh, considerably more right now, Shapovalov, than Nadal to me. Well, I think that's what Petch alluded to, that you know, winning that third set creates hope, and hope creates energy. So Nadal taking the code violation so that he could get a bit more time. Shapovalov looking like he's possibly taking up a deeper position. And if you Lens. take that code violation, Seven. it tells you something. You need the extra time. Missed by a mile with that second serve, having given an opportunity to have a second crack at it, and that was fortunate to say the least. And those double faults must be starting to prey on his mind in those big moments as well. His ninth. You guys, two hours and 53 minutes into this match, we've got a completely different situation now. Mentally, emotionally, everything. Fifteen 
15 on. Yeah, Rafa's turn to get into Carlos Bernardo's a little bit about the clock. I think that was just based on him getting coded the previous time. He was a little more respectful about how he approached it as well. Which foot is it that Rafa's had a problem with? Do you know? I wonder if I wonder if Brad knows. Oh, he just touched his uh, left foot with his racket there as he, as he walked across. Who knows? Maybe he's struggling with that. Maybe it's just physical. Chef Barlock looking dangerous now. Very much so. building take nothing away from Shapovalov but look at the grimacing here from Nadal it's his left foot has been a problem in right now but some pretty desperate times for the 20 time major champion It doesn't look to me like it's affecting the speed of his serve. So that would indicate possibly that it's not a, a, a stomach muscle, a, a muscle problem. It, it might just be a stomach upset here. But he's he's not the same player he was an hour ago.
15. If it's, I agree with you, you guys can look at the data up there, but I don't think his serve speed has dropped off a, a whole lot. Which, like you said, Fitz, would, would indicate that it is probably not an abdominal muscle. forced under these circumstances to start shortening the points a little bit, especially at this score line in the fourth set. Fourth hour of this contest underway. Still much to be decided. It's going to be important for Shapovalov as well to stay as consistently aggressive Four as he has minutes. been in this match. And as you can see here, Pretty different from Nadal's perspective. The ball that he's getting back, considerable pace coming back onto him. Takes a lot of dynamic movement. Is that something that's also contributed to some of the physical discomfort that he may be feeling right now? Yeah, Brad, just looking at the data with Will from Hawkeye, also just confirming that the speeds haven't changed for Nadal as of yet. We'll keep an eye on it. There's that quick return we've just been showing you. 14, 13. Pace hasn't dropped off, but Denis Shapovalov has definitely found his timing and contact on the on the return. He's been very clean on returns, much more consistent over the last probably six or seven return games. Feels like he's found the middle of the court a lot with those returns as well. It's almost as though he's managed to narrow the focus, put it into the big part of the court. to pick up from his locker is, I think, what Thank he you. was saying. Your Spanish is good. Yeah, I was going to say, Carlos is uh, he's good on the Google Translate for me. some of the stats here as the match has developed and you can just see Shapovalov first point of each game he is well he's missed two going out wide but the rest of them have all gone down the middle even the ones that he's missed and you're looking at about 12 serves there compared to just two that have gone out wide that is a bit of a clue for Nadal if he knew that
There's so much less physicality in these points now. They're, they're finishing quickly. Shapovalov is still vibrant. Rafa not as physical as he normally is. To it, but it is the play that really is saved Shapovalov today, didn't it? Out of the blue, he served and volleyed on the second serve at the start of the third set with Nadal putting pressure on his serve at Love 30. Yeah, when you look back and replay this match, that individual point patch was so enormous. If Shapovalov misses a volley there, or Rafa sees him coming, hits a winner. Yeah. And 40, and the complexion of the match could be completely different. Energy. Well, an absence of alternatives now also could help Nadal, knowing that he has to load on the ball like that. I agree with that 100%, Petch. As I mentioned before, he, he'd been playing pretty neutral tennis. This stomach issue may force him to play more aggressive. Flawless though from Shapovalov in the fourth, 5-2. Well, from Rafa's point of view, Potentially, this is going to go to a fifth if he is struggling physically. The longer he can drag out this four set, maybe take a, an extended clothes redressing break at the end of the fifth, he can get this shadow right across the court. Just take a little bit of heat out of the air. More importantly, he needs to take a bit of sting out of Shapovalov's shots. Didn't have these in your day, Fitzy. Still had some pretty warm days. Well, this surface makes a big difference, doesn't it? Hey, when you play on grass in, in the last century, it wasn't so hot. But uh, no, no, it's hot down there, um, and it's it's wearing. It can be worse. Our friend Jim Courier played uh, Stefan Edberg here on a day that must have been pushing 40 degrees and a hot north Thank wind you. on a surface that actually accelerated the heat, so or enhanced the heat, so. Uh, this is not so bad. It's, it's rather pleasant compared to that, but it's over five sets, still very wearing. great players do the truly great ones they rarely sometimes never walk to the net and shake hands they finish even under duress 
I'm not saying uh, Raf has lost it this yet, but it looks like it, it's going to go the distance, doesn't it? Plenty of players around that first sign of adversity, are oh, they walk up and shake hands. How was that point? I think, I think our co-commentator down there might have been applauding there, Mark. 15 off. <laughs> oh. that, that point alone was worth the price of admission. <laughs> It was just amazing shot making movement. The type of point the great man Rod Laver would play and could play with a wooden racket, mind you. <laughs> Guys, I've made the comment a couple times, but even on that play, Rafa coming in and made a nice little drop shot there, but. Dennis is on the return. His timing is really on fire right now. He's seeing Rafa serve really well. Well, we're seeing a, a deep dive into the repertoire and depth of Rafa's game here that he's able just to start cracking out the server volley play. Desperate times, desperate measures for Nadal, but he's good enough to accomplish what he set out to do. And guys, you get the impression down here that Rafa needs Dennis to come down a notch or two here. He's been playing phenomenal tennis. Everything is clicking for him, and every time he hits one of those big balls, whether it's forehand or backhand, serves and volleys, he feeds off of the energy that he gets from his own shot making. He loves being a shot maker. Pumps him up every time he's able to win a point with one of those spectacular shots. Thank you. Thank you. Shade just may end up helping Nadal a little bit perhaps in this game if he can get some decent returns back through on the angle and just not allow Shapovalov to pick it up as quickly. Great return. To find the backhand from there was not an easy shot. No. But the tension of serving out a set too. That was a that was not a difficult shot for, for Dennis, was it? It's it's the moment really. Seizing the moment. But he needed to make it, and he's drilled it at Mac 10. Hugely impressive forehand. Thank you.
this certainly not a twist in the tail that Fifteen. anyone really saw coming. It's been so comfortable on serve in this fourth set. Shapovalov. A few errant ground strokes and Nadal with the opportunity to get back on serve. Please already. Thank you. Thank you. The emotional roller coaster his fans are on. Too good. Well, too good, but Rafa didn't move for that either. Fastest serve of the day. Shapovalov. Looked like he was leaning one way and didn't go back. Please. Thank you. Is he going to seize this moment? Yes. Beautiful footwork. Gave himself the space to be able to hit that wherever he wanted. just detonating off Shapovalov's racket at the moment. What a conclusion to this four set. Set point. into a fifth and deciding set. Some brilliant shot making, Brad, off the forehand side, a couple of the plus one shots straight off the return from Nadal were truly magnificent from Dennis. Yeah, all credit to Dennis in that game. From 1540 down, a couple of big serves on the deuce side out wide to the forehand, and, and then those two serve in one place with the offside forehand, both for clean winners. And he held his nerve and executed under pressure there. It was really impressive. Rafa is going to take as much time as he's allowed, and then. And a medical evaluation is coming as well, so there is going to be a substantial amount of time now between the end of the fourth and the start of the fifth set that Shapovalov is going to have to guard against any kind of flat spot adrenaline drop when he comes out at the start of the fifth because he was buoyed up at the end of it, understandably so. The beauty and brutality of some of that shot making down the final stretch of the fourth was exceptional. Well, as we roll the credits, there is no great surprise who the leading man was in the fourth set. Look at that, 14 winners to just eight from Nadal, and they had exactly the same number of unforced errors. He was the playmaker, the shot maker. He was the one hitting the ball harder as well, working harder as those top two lines will tell you. And he was having to move a little bit more. Five set records, of course, coming into this now. He's won his last four, Shapovalov as well. So looking at all that energy he's expended, doesn't mind going the distance. Those wins have come against Yannick Sinner here last year for the Canadian against Cole Schreiber at Wimbledon. He had a couple of five setters. Cole Schreiber at Wimbledon in five sets. Kashinov also at Wimbledon. And 
Soon Woon Kwun here. Also in the round of 64. So good news for the Canadian in terms of his five set record. Rafa's won 22, lost 13. But that last one, of course, again here against Sitsipas from two sets to love up. Similar situation he finds himself in today. He's the man with the momentum. And it feels Fitzy as though he's the man with the match on his racket, which certainly wasn't the case for two and a half sets. Well, I talked earlier, Mark, about how hard it is to win three straight sets from two sets to love down. And even if you get to two sets all, the odds seem to be still in favor with the guy that won the two, the first two. But, but in this situation, right now, you'd have to say he's favorite, surely. And I think that's a fair point that he was asking there. He just wanted to make sure in his own mind if Rafa hadn't have just had an evaluation before on one of the changeovers. But as Carlos just saying, no, that wasn't the case. So this could take anywhere, to be honest. This could take yeah. 10 minutes. It could take longer. Depends how long the evaluation, depends what the problem is. Brad, your thoughts? My thoughts, my mind is a blank right now. I think the sun's finally gotten to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, I've only been sitting down here in the sun for three hours and 21 minutes, so it's not bad. Um, I mean, Rafa's been gone now for about three minutes. I do think it's probably important for Dennis to get up out of his seat and move around a little bit, because as you said, Pets, there's no telling how long this could be with a medical examination. I'm not even sure if there are specific guidelines and time periods for a medical examination uh, or how long he's allowed to be gone in relationship to that but i do think that as we get back to the match you've got rafa serving first he's coming back after this break i think that's a little bit of a disadvantage for him Dennis has really found his shot making capability that we that we know he's always dangerous with. You see what he's saying here to Carlos in the shirt. I thought I also heard on the walkie-talkie when Carlos was talking to the, the medical staff inside that he was also having a toilet break. You, you can have that more than once in five sets. Yeah. It's a bit confusing though because this is a long break, you know, and and the momentum is with Shapovalov, and you can understand him being a little bit antsy, I would think. Fitz, I don't, I don't honestly feel that that was that long a break. It was honestly five minutes. He left the court at uh, 3:18 on the clock. It's now 3:23. That's the time clock that keeps the time for the match. I looked to see when he left the court. So five minutes really. Not that long. I mean, before we had the the limited time for the bathroom break, guys were gone sometimes for 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 minutes. Yeah, well, that's no good. But the time since the last point is 6 minutes, 47 seconds right at this moment. So it's a, it's a decent break. But let's hope it doesn't interrupt any uh, momentum for either side here. Let for service. Good call. <laughs> Everyone's on edge, even Hawkeye. <laughs> Statistics will tell you that serving first in the deciding set doesn't really 
help you over the course of your career. You probably win and lose as many, but it kind of feels as though maybe this would just be a little easier psychologically for Rafa. talk about it on the commentating don't we patch serving first and having that little lead always trying to to break especially when the score gets deep from three four or four five or five six it's a little bit of advantage for serving first Left. Second service. Thank you, please. Thank you. Well, it's amazing how he can hit winners and create something out of nothing. There's danger lurking on every point here for Nadal down the stretch of the fifth set. Just a crazy angle inside the service line from how deep Dennis was when he made contact with him. He's a rare gem Please. in that regard. Very few players on the tour can hit that shot. or not but it kind of looks as though Raph is almost throwing yeah. the ball yeah. and the ball toss was lower too yeah it looks like it's thrown it to his left so that he's not having to extend the yeah, abdomen on the stretch up for the serve it's going to make the serve a flatter trajectory it's perhaps going to be why Shapovalov's also had a better read of it Three first serves, two double faults, and a winner from Chapo to be a deuce. It's just kind of inexplicable from, from great serving to throwing in those two doubles. Shapovalov there, I mean, he moved before Rafa even put yeah, the ball out of his hand. Nada. It almost feels as though he can't, it looks as though Shapovalov doesn't feel as though he can hit the other serve the way he moved to that one. Come <laughs> on. 
Yeah, the battle of that. That's not even meant to be the best part of his game, is it? First game, final sides. That was as good a reflex volley as you hope to see. Makes a little mistake here. That wasn't the smartest volley Raff has ever hit, but he picks the down the line here with great reflexes and anticipation. Well, we were all blindsided by Rafa's brilliance here. What a difference in emotional boost, guys. Rafa getting the benefit of that finish. If Dennis had made that passing shot, the crowd would have erupted just as much, and it would have been him pumping his fist and getting fired up there. Thank you. Yeah, but I think Shapovalov knows he's Rafa is not at 100%. Players already. Thank you. Definitely not in prime physical condition, but this now a battle of wits, and Rafa is never unarmed in this situation, no matter how much he's hurting. Oh, look at him. He doesn't often do that. And he's been doing that Please. for a set, by the way, leaning on his racket. Please. He's got away with it there, Rafa, but you do wonder if he's hurting, and it, you have to imagine he's hurting quite substantially at the moment. Why doesn't he go back standing inside the baseline and just trying to fire a few returns? He hasn't hit a ton of really clean returns from that deep position today. He struggled with the forehand a little bit in general. Players are ready. see some drama over the next 30 minutes there's a lot more to unfold here Rafa who's been unable to stick the dismount in some pretty crucial Shapovalov games in the last couple of sets may be able to do that now thank you thank you Despair in the opening game of the fifth, where he was looking as though he was on the cusp of going down a break. He re energizes the crowd and himself with a breaker serve out of nowhere. Lady, please respect the players. He got Lady, a lot of help you. there from Dennis Shapovalov, Petch. Question for you guys When was the last time that Shapo served and volleyed? Yeah, he stopped doing it. He stopped doing it. Yeah. I mean, he, he he made a couple of unforced errors there that contributed to that loss, didn't it? In that game, didn't he? Good observation, Brad. Yeah. Put that, pressure on his ground strokes. That's why his nickname's the coach.
This is far from over, though. Yeah. Lot 15. That's a perfect start after you've just dropped your serve. Rafa's movement on that ball, guys. Looked like you lay on a Saturday night, Brad. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe those tablets that he got from the doctor have started to kick in. That was back to how he started the match. Vintage Nadal when he needed it the most. Fabulous point from Shapovalov. Good Chris Pitting keeping Nadal on the run, and he just posed the question. Such a good job for such a long period of this match. Shapovalov drilling that four and return in. through the middle of the court. Got to keep the same quantity of returns being made up. The ecstasy just a few moments ago when he grabbed the break. The agony of the missed backhand under pressure. Dennis really popped up out of that shot, guys. I don't know if he was too close, the angle that I have. Actually, I couldn't tell. It looked like he might have been a little bit too close. And, but, man, he really popped up out of the shot early. Yeah, no doubt this situation is going to test his young character. This is a big moment for a young player.
Well, Rafa having trouble in my book. Changing direction, going back into that backhand corner back there a couple of times, had trouble there, and then is not at, at full capacity at end range on the forehand. It fits for me. What I, what I don't like in that point, I said it a couple times earlier, but Rafa had a off forehand early in that point, and he just didn't do very much with the ball. And normally he would be crushing that ball. Yeah. Please. Thank you. stage of his career for Shapovalov as well there's been uh, some highs but there's also been some lows and perhaps Nadal was also one of those watching at Wimbledon when obviously Shapovalov served for the opening set in that semi against Novak didn't he Do you remember that easy forehand he had dry volley that he ended up just missing threw away the opportunity there that hurt his chances massively still left and then he's been granted another one no. there 44 now from Shapovalov and there have been some costly ones at the start of this fifth he just wasn't missing Thank those you. in the fourth patch everything was going in how close it's going to be those moments are going to unfold in front of our eyes in the next 20 minutes that one's gone the doll's way goodness gracious guys it pays millimeters to, yeah it on pays a massive to, point brad it pays to have clean living mate absolutely fits that's why you never got any of those <laughs> isn't it it just brings out the best and sometimes the worst but so often the best out of great players you know for me Shapovalov just needs to keep the ball in longer he, he, I know he's playing his natural game by going for uh, a fair share of winners off the back at the back of the court but Rafa is not at his best from the back he's not hurting Shapovalov as much as he normally would so I don't see 
the necessity for Shapovalov to go for so much. He, if he can keep the ball in, make Rafa move, he's not moving 100%. Just don't give away free points. That's surely got to be his objective here. that has ruled the landscape of men's tennis for over 15 years now. He never, ever fails to entertain. You can always take a souvenir and many memories from a contest when you've watched this man play. Well, once again, we witness the depths of his desire and competitive will to find a way to win a match that looked to be slipping away from him. He was caught in a riptide. Thank you. But right now it looks as though it may be plain sailing. <laughs> Guys, we're going to see some more moments like those last couple of games through to the end of this set and it just makes me think about which one of these guys do you think is going to be more comfortable being uncomfortable which one's been <laughs> more in more uncomfortable situations we obviously know the answer to that is rafa and, and i think that one of the things that the top guys do i've talked a little bit about some commonalities amongst them is that they become more comfortable being uncomfortable in these kind yes. of pressure packed situations. Dennis is still growing into that a little bit. I still have a question for Brett. Can you be comfortable when you're uncomfortable? I've been a little bit uncomfortable for the last three hours and 47 minutes, and I'm pretty comfortable and happy right where I am, Fitz. Best seat in the house. And it's been great to have you alongside us for the ride, Brad. You've added so much, and again, I couldn't agree with you more. This tolerance for suffering is something that's in the DNA of Spanish tennis. They talk about it, don't they? It's a badge of honor, and he's worn it like a badge of honor. And other nationalities know they have to face it when they play someone from that Spanish heritage. You know, the other thing for me, guys, is that throughout the majority of this match, I don't think that Rafa has played as aggressively as as he normally would against a lot of other opponents. I think he came out with the idea that he could kind of rope a dope and wait for Dennis to miss balls. And, and it's led to him not hitting the ball quite as well or quite as clean as he would like to. I, I felt but, like though in the first set, first he, first. he was going after the ball more. There was more energy. He was hitting the ball ha harder, surely, in the first, heavier. disagree with that fits but one of the points that I wanted to make is that I, I had a conversation a lot of years ago in the locker room at Wimbledon after Rafa had won a match in five sets in the early rounds at Wimbledon and Uncle Tony said to me Rafa doesn't care how he's hitting the ball as long as he wins he can always go to the practice court and try and find his stroke and I feel like he's kind of done that in this match. Jim Courier was another guy that was very much in that mode. Well, the ugly wins are sometimes the ones that you remember most when you're not playing at your best. He's on the board, the Canadian, and 
Still showing a lot of good positive body Nada language here. Leads by three games to one. Excellent service game in terms of first serves in and how they were needed as well. Traction gained by the Canadian. If Dennis can find that timing on his return that he had throughout the fourth set, he will put pressure on Rafa's serve. Thank you. Oh, yes, the half volley with spin. <laughs> A pretty fair shot, that one. like he's throwing the ball low to me like you mentioned a little bit out to to the left on the cards in this game for Shapovalov. 14, a couple of 17. quality points from him. Two clean returns there in a row, Petch. Finding that timing or maybe getting a read on it again. He had such a good read on it through the fourth set. Thank you. Thank you. Set. Nadal leads by four games to one. The price of perfection on every point right now. Another good rally developing here for Shapovalov. Just couldn't quite find the final shot. 
He's generating more power, isn't he? Uh, uh, like a lot more, it seems to me. Rafa's ball is as light as you've ever seen it, probably. He, he just doesn't seem to have the racket head speed that he normally has, and um, he must be hurting. And I don't know whether that will definitely be the, the, the stomach that's hurting him or whether he's just physically uh -huh. drained. But something is not 100%. Everyone looking calm and composed outside, or maybe they're heading to Garden Square to the big screen to see the final moments of what has been a quite epic contest on the Rod Laver Arena. We are five minutes shy of four hours, and a match that you still feel has a lot to unfold. There'll be a lot to unpack afterwards as well. And most of it has been truly memorable. Thank you. Players are ready. Thank you. It's not going to be easy for Rafa to win two more service games either. You know, if, and this is what Shapovalov, from his point of view, has to think positively about. If he can hold his own serve, it is not going to be easy for Rafa. That was too long. He's had a good serving set as well. He just had the one game where he missed too much off the ground, but he's at 80% of his first serves going in. He's guessing on that first court. Right. He's also conserving oh, energy. And the true essence of sport is that of uncertainty, and we still have it in this match. A substantial amount of uncertainty as well. Please, thank you. Please, already. thank you. Again, Shapovalov. Brad, he's condensing all of his focus, Nadal, into his service games here. Yeah, I think once behind Nadal, he got, once he got behind in that game, game he, he was basically willing to let it go, save his energy, work for this service game. But as Fitz said, nothing's going to come easy in these next two service games. showcases the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune as Shakespeare said as a five-set match thank you Target didn't need to be that small. But again, I, I'm focused a little bit on the, the return there. The return was so clean again. He's kind of finding his range again on that serve. from Nadal here. I mean, you want to talk about his forehand, but let's talk about his serve. Let's talk about a shot that is winning him this match. Unbelievably, almost 70% of his first serves have been unreturned in this final set.
Sorry, that was my arm force, Sarah. 14, 15. He's having to work a lot harder on his serve. It was Shapovalov that was waltzing through his service games, bar the one that obviously he offered up the arm force there is on. And yet somehow Rafa still here on the cusp of one of his finest victories at the Australian Open. Four hours gone. He sort of beat Denka. Went after it. 5 2, a game away from a place in the semi finals. Didn't seem that likely, to be honest, at the end of the fourth set, start of the fifth, that this would be the scenario, the scoreline that we're looking at right now, Fitzy. It's why tennis is so lovable, Mark, isn't it? There's so many twists and turns. There's peaks, there's valleys. It's especially over five set men's tennis, and it, it, it just produces drama. What a performance that was on serve, Brad, as well, from Rafa, one of his finest of the match. Yeah, you, you might have made a miss, uh, an unforced air there for a minute, Petch, but that game backed up everything you were saying. That was an unbelievable service game from him. Time. The magic of Melbourne. Burning heat, burning desire. A couple of players out here today that have had red hot passion to get a victory that would propel them to the last four of the first major of the year. The storylines here at this year's Australian Open have been coming thick and fast. Interesting to see what Rafa does here on this Thank return you. game after just kind of letting the last Thank one go. Please. Thank you. I think he'll look to get into the first point or two, but if, they're, if they go by quickly. And he may just conserve his energy again. Yeah, if he loses this point, I think he'll start thinking about the very first point on his own service game next game. Shapovalov just too good. Oh, you called that, Brad. That was a slap shot, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a. Uh, that's what we normally think of as a love 40 shot. It was a love 30 shot. He's not worried about extending these points right now.
pitch. That was one of the biggest forehands Rafa has hit in a while. Full energy, full commitment, full acceleration. That's what we're used to seeing from him. Please. He's picked the forehand both times, though, Shapovalov. This is a long way from over. He's lent there both times and picked it beautifully. Carlos can barely watch. Please. Mark Lopez next to him as well on board for this year. What a ride it's going to be if this is anything to go by. Well, you know, with the low ball toss he's been using, I wondered if he could get it high enough to get it out there to the backhand wing. But 13, 15. of course he can. He would have paid a lot of money for that miss from Shapovalov. But didn't need to. He didn't need to pay because he's earned it. Desire, determination, dedication, sacrifice. Please, thank you. All of those things have gone into this performance from Nadal. Match points. deeper at this tournament in the future, unquestionably. Dennis walks off desperately disappointed, but it is the undiluted champion qualities and desire, Fitzy, of Rafa that shone through in the end. Oh, he's just magnificent, isn't he? He really is. What a performance. He timed it only just, but he timed it. He knew he only had a little bit left. And he proved again what a great champion he is. A, a young man learning the journey, isn't he? Shapovalov. And today he got a harsh lesson in the end from a great champion. There's the pose, there's the celebration. And Brad just finally, US Marines, they say under pressure, you don't rise to the occasion. 
you sink to your level of training, and that's why we train so hard. Same can be said for this man, can't it? I mean, that's a great line, Patch. You couldn't apply more. I, I think it's just amazing to see him at this point in his career with uh, the same passion, the same heart to compete in these kind of matches and put on the show that he does. He doesn't try to put on a show. All he does is play the tennis that he loves to play, and it's so fantastic to watch for all of us. We've been lucky, so lucky, over the last 15 years plus to watch some of the greatest players of all time, not just thrill us individually, but obviously with the duels that they've had with their rivals and making them better players than they ever possibly could have been. But this champion, he is a little special. Let's hear what he has to say with another former champion here, Jim Rafa, Carrera. Rafa, uh, it was a good start for you. You got off to a two sets to love lead, but Dennis is so good, so talented, and he came back strong, was able to get you into a fifth set, and you faced some break points early. How did you turn this around and finish this match off? Well, I don't know. Honestly, the... <laughs> I was completely destroyed after that. Uh, yeah, very tough day, very warm. Uh, Honestly, I was, I didn't practice for it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I was a little bit lucky at the beginning of the, of the fifth. I think uh, at the beginning of the match, I was playing uh, great. Uh, then uh, I know how difficult it is to play against uh, a player like Dennis. No, he's very talented, very aggressive. Uh, he was serving huge, uh, and especially the, the second serve. So. Uh, I mean, I think I had my chances at the beginning of the third with love 30, then 115-30, passing shot down the line. I didn't get it, and then uh, I started to feel a little bit more tired, and then he pushed me now. So, yeah, for me, it's amazing, honestly, to be in that semifinals. <laughs> We saw in the fourth set, we saw the, the trainer, we saw the doctor come out and see you on the change of ends. It seemed like they gave you something, a tablet or something. What was the problem? Well, uh, I started to feel not very well uh, in my stomach, so I just asked if they can do uh, something. No, they, we went inside, they take the, the tension, they, they, they just checked uh, that everything was all right yep. on my body, and then, uh, and then I take it some, some tablets to, to try to improve the, the stomach problem that I had, that's all. Did it get better? Did it improve? So, so, I think I was lucky that I was serving great in the fifth. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know that you were lucky. Uh, you're, you're very rarely lucky. But this year, it's un, un, different than past years at the Australian Open. You're playing the quarterfinals on Tuesday. Normally, you would play the semifinals on Thursday. This year, the men's semifinals will both take place on Friday. That gives you two days off. Is that a real important thing for you, given everything you've experienced so far in this tournament? Today, yes. Very important. <laughs> well, yeah. I am not 21 anymore, so <laughs> after this, uh, these matches is, is great to have two days, two days off. No, I think I, I felt quite good physically uh, in terms of movements, but it's true that the, the conditions uh, here haven't, haven't been that hard for the last week and a half. No? So, uh, well, at least it was a, was a great test, I hope, and I really believe that I'm going to be ready for that semifinals. For me, it's uh, everything to, to be able to play one more time here in the, in the World Labour Arena in that semi-finals match, so I am just excited, happy, and just can't thank enough everybody for the support, honestly. Well, you may not be 21 years old anymore, but you're going for number 21. I know that's a big deal. We'll table that. But I want to I wanna go big picture here. The last six months have been very difficult for you. We didn't see you on tour because you've had the foot problem, and then you got COVID just before, in December, before coming here. Now the stomach issue, I mean, 
I'm in awe of what you're doing. Are you surprised that you're able to, to overcome all of that and, and perform at this level and make it to the semifinals and still going? Of course. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, it's, we can uh, create histories or this stuff, but uh, the real truth, uh, the real truth is that uh, two months ago uh, we didn't know if we will be able to, to be back on tour at all. No, so uh, here I am. For me, it's just a, a present of life that uh, I am here playing tennis again, and I just enjoy. It. We've had enough of your time, Rafa. Thank you so much for that match. You and Dennis gave us a Thank real you. treat. Ladies and Thank gentlemen, you very he much, is guys. the Thank one and only Rafa Nadal. And Jim says it correctly, the one and only. We don't know how many more years, how many more matches we will get to savor like that from Rafa. Let's make sure we do savor it. And let's make sure we give him the respect and love and admiration that he deserves. Wow. He, he is someone to savor, isn't he? It's incredible, as Jim says, what he's been through. His passion for the game, his desire to win. But amongst that winning, he has also entertained us so specially throughout the course of his career. He has handled himself with aplomb, with authenticity, and with such admirable qualities as well. There is simply nothing not to love about Rafael Nadal. And even Denis Shapovalov in a few days, I'm sure, will look back at that match and realize what a special occasion it is to play Rafa on one of the biggest courts, one of the most famous courts that we have in tennis. The numbers are always important and they'll get pulled apart, but a lot of the time it's how people have made you feel. And Rafa always makes you feel just that little bit special. You leave the stadium with a smile on your face. The, the, the word for me is always ethic with Rafa. Look at that smile. Look at what it still means to him. The miles he's flown, the miles he's run, and not just in front of us, but away from us when the pain was so great, the toil on his body, the dark times, the lonely times, the questioning times, whether he would ever get back to this moment. And he has a shot, as Jim Courier said, of number 21 in terms of majors here in Melbourne. Iconic.